Welcome to Open Source Spotlight. We invite open source authors and ask them to show the tools they're working on. Today we have Sergey and Lev. Hi, tell us a few words about yourself and about the tool you want to show us. Hello, my name is Lev Chirov. I am a founder at MetaAgent Labs and uh, I have been working on a lot of different projects, uh, including a lot of uh, small AI projects. And I realized that a lot of the tasks I am performing can actually be done by GPT-4. And therefore, we decided to create Clipinator. Uh, MetaAgent Labs is an AI studio. My name is Sergey. I live in France. I work at a startup which is called New Mind. We are building the best AutoML platform in the industry. OK, what's the tool you want to show us? So what if you never had to complete a routine programming task ever again? We are introducing Clipinator an open source autonomous programming assistant based on the team of AI agents. It can complete small projects absolutely by itself, but more importantly, it can work on real world projects, including a Twitter clone. Uh, and for that, you, you just have to steer it a little bit and give it some feedback. So guys, uh, just as Lev said, Clipinator is interactive programming AI assistant. It can work on existing projects and new ones. Project size doesn't matter. Difficulty of the query doesn't matter. And the ideal prompt doesn't matter. Our today's talk will be about how it works internally, about uh, an idea to create agent, AI agent driven projects and how we can actually uh, connect them together to make sure the memory management and all the other components are perfectly fine. This talk will be interesting to people who are enthusiastic about generative AI space, people who don't know anything about AI agents, or people who want to know more, and generally speaking, AI enthusiasts overall. Uh, so, when we started developing Clippy, or Clippinator as we like to call it, there were two websites everybody was talking about. It was Twitter and it was Threads, and we thought, since our tool can create basically anything, why if we, what if we create a copy of threads of our own? So what happened is that we thought, well, we can actually be a Mark Zuckerberg number two. And so we created it. Here you can see we have a website uh, and there are several posts, post by Lev, post by me, and post by Elon Musk, uh, who says that Twitter is better. And as a demo, we would like to change this website a little bit. As you can see in front of our nicknames, we have the certain emojis. And we thought, well, if Elon Musk is our competitor, let's thumb him down a little bit. So here, let me just switch to the command line and I'll show you how it works. Here we are on the command line. As we can see, the website is running. And now I just need to make sure I run the Clippinator. Now, when it's up and running, I will just, so uh, we're gonna quickly uh, run the clipping editor and ask it to thumb down uh, Elon Musk if we see him. And so I'm just gonna run it. And while it takes some time, I'm gonna invite Lev to talk about our project and its internals. Oh, wait a second, I just want to understand what uh, actually happened. So you have a website that you developed using clipping editor, right? And yeah. then uh, one thing you want to do is you want to add a new feature, right? And then you, yeah. as a prompt, you said, hey, we want to introduce this new feature, thumbs down, do it, right? And yeah. you hit enter after that. Yeah, that's right. So what we want to do is we want to have a thumbs down right in front of Elon Musk's nickname because he is a competitor. And <laughs> uh, in front of Elon Musk. Yeah, that's right. And okay. so right now the webs the project is running and in several minutes, hopefully we're gonna see a correct version of this website with this, with this feature added. That's interesting. Talk about how it works inside. Uh, first, we need to introduce the concept of agents. Uh, agents are just uh, uh, things based on LLMs, which use tools to achieve certain objectives. So for instance, we tell an agent to add some feature, uh, it understands to read, uh, that it needs to read a related file, then it writes action uh, and the name of the action it wants to perform, uh, action input, 
and then some input for the two and then uh, it just writes a, a result and then we introduce the of the tool uh, to the log and run it again so uh, every time we query the large language model again and uh, in that way we can uh, make the language model actually perform actions in the real world uh, like with the uh, chat GPT plugins. But for us, the architecture is more complex. Clipinator has a main agent called Taskmaster, which manages the overall flow of development. Uh, it can call different sub-agents and uh, give tasks to them. So for instance, uh, when we want to start a project from scratch, it first calls the architect and then the architect plans the project uh and uh, returns the flow to the taskmaster the uh, log of each of the agents is uh, independent so they do not remember what uh, so for instance the writer does not remember what the taskmaster did they uh, start from the task every time but uh, if they only had the task like here uh, it would be very inconvenient for them. They would have to, for instance, discover the entire project, read some files maybe to understand it, and uh, they would not be able to perform the task well. And uh, in fact, the reason for having the specialized sub-agents, which we call minions, uh, is to separate the context uh, so that there is no, um, so that everything is not uh, clamped in together. Otherwise, uh, it would not be possible to retrieve all the necessary information because the context length would just be too long. And so for that, we manage the flow of information in a smart way. We have some shared context. The first thing we give to all the agents is the architecture. It is planned out by the architect, but also can be edited by the user and uh, then made available to each of the sub-agents. Uh, this allows them to have an understanding what the project should be. And of course, they should also understand what the project really is at this stage. And for that, we give the project structure, which is an outline of uh, which folders and files you have in the folder, uh, in the project directory, and uh, uh, the most important classes and functions from each file. Uh, we go through the tree, parse the files, uh, parse the code inside them and then uh, pick the most important things. Uh, we give it to all the agents. So for instance, the editor will know what has been done before him and uh, it will be able to um, perform the necessary patches. We also have the memory, uh, which is shared across all agents so that they can uh, remember some things and uh, for instance if there is some important nuance about the project uh, one agent can remember it and then the rest will know it. Uh, and one thing which is really helpful in practice is linting. Every time uh, there is an error we remind about it next to the project structure and therefore the entire system keeps that in mind in the same way as uh, we as developers would keep that in mind uh, when there is a bug in our project. And uh, another interesting hack we had is the sum uh, summarization of history for the Taskmaster because it can work for very, very long and uh, it would overflow the context of GPT. So to store a lot of information, uh, use summarization. And uh, the log which you have seen before is actually uh, summarized and uh, therefore it can run for longer times. And uh, an important property is that you can stop the agent at any time and add extra feedback to it, which allows you to steer it. And uh, this, I believe, a very important concept for the future of development. Uh, Clipinator uh, can perform some tasks completely by itself but on some larger time scale it can go off rails it can forget about some thing it did uh, it can forget about something which is broken it can forget about uh, something which it had already done and uh, do it again and so that can sometimes be inconvenient and so you should be the one uh, steering clipinator basically it's like a car 
which drives usually by itself, but sometimes you take control, you add a little prompt there uh, to uh, let it know what it should do, and then it continues driving by itself. For instance, uh, in that way, in a couple of hours, I could create a Twitter clone with a lot of functionality uh, in React and FastAPI, which I did not previously work with. And uh, the lessons we have Mm, the lessons we have from developing Clipinator are actually very applicable to the to building AI systems as a whole, because uh, the concept of subagents is really powerful for distributing instructions and uh, tools across uh, different scopes. If we had uh, put all of the tools and all of the in little instructions we have, like uh, read a file before rewriting it into one big prompt, it would just be completely useless because it would be disoriented. It would not be, uh, it would not know what to do. But uh, that kind of specialization allows us to uh, have little bit, little pieces of advice for each task. It allows the task master to structure its own thinking. Uh, it allows task master to keep a small context. And uh, that is really useful in the future. We could also use fine-tuned models for uh, different sub-agents. And I believe that is the most uh, valuable lesson for anyone building AI applications. Yeah, guys. So the demo is actually ready. You know, it's uh, always stressful to do live demos. <laughs> so I'm going to start with the website. Here you can see the website is still the same. We have the same emojis, but Elon Musk got a thumbs down right in front of him. Well, uh, it works as expected. And now let's review terminal how and talk about how Clippy works in practice. Just give me a second. Is this the correct terminal? I think so. Let me just zoom in this prompt. Uh, so here we can see how it actually works. Because uh, Clippy was, uh, was initialized before on this project, because this project was built, we had a certain memory database which contains some information about the project structure and which component is responsible for what. So when we asked this particular query for Clippy, it was really easy. It immediately started edit editing the code by calling the editor agent. Inside the editor agent, it automatically understood which file needs to be read because once again, it remembers and uh, efficiently preserves the context. So here, for example, it read the correct file by, uh, by using read file tool, here it is. And then it modified it by using our AI agent and wrote it back to file. So it was a pretty simple example, but here we can see a really interesting idea that our team leader called an editor and inside there were certain tools, but not necessarily in one loop, which allows us to be kind of modular if we can say so, in terms of the execution of the um, orders and kind of transactional. So now, um, as, we, as we saw, everything is working. Now let's talk about what Clippy can actually do. When we're talking about creating a huge computer science project uh, as a real software developer, not as an AI, we need to have a lot of different abilities. Obviously, we need to read and write files, something we can do. And also, it's really important to make sure that we're implementing the correct thing when we're working with long project. For this, we sometimes may want to ask our boss what we need to do or and remember certain information. Clippy is really efficient when it comes to this. It can ask human for certain clues. It can remember certain information. And sometimes it can also use internet. Additionally, imagine we're working on a huge project, backend and frontend. It's important when working on those projects to make those folders as independent as possible. And one of the ways to achieve a high code, a high code quality and the independence of the code is by using the modular structure. In our case, we support a modular structure. And in practice, what happens is usually backend is being implemented separately from frontend, and then they are being integrated by uh, some of our agents. Additionally, when the project is already done, it's important to test it, to launch it, and then deploy. For all of this, 
we need to be able to manage dependencies, run and implement unit tests and deploy. And thanks to the integration with Bash and other tools, we can do this. Now, uh, the final thing we would like to show is how the Clippy works from scratch, because it's really interesting to see and useful to see uh, in order to get a feeling on how AI agent projects actually operate. So here, this is the start of our project. Some of the information isn't preserved in this prompt because this is more of a debugging one, but it gives us a really brilliant idea of how it works internally. Initially, when we ask Clippy to create Twitter, it would initialize from the corresponding template, template of an application which consists a uh, backend which supports React based on Next.js and uh, Python, I'm sorry, frontend and backend uh, which supports uh, fast API. Here, for example, we can see uh, a folder which is uh, used for a frontend and this is the folder which is used for the backend. This template structure also contains certain hints on what should be on which line and so on. Now, later on, uh, we start doing something different. Clippy automatically understands that it's necessary to have a plan on how we're going to achieve the objective. And so for this, way, for this, uh, it will call agent, which is called architect. Architect is called usually only once. Here we ask it to call a prototype. And as, a, as an output, architect usually provides a really detailed information about the project. API schema, backend structure with a, uh, yeah, API schema and the backend structure here with the suggested methods like here, for example. And the corresponding information would be also provided to front end. It's important that if we don't like something, we can obviously steer it because we're for all for the concept of interactive AI. So if we suggest something which isn't suggested by the architecture, we can always edit. Now let's see what's happening. Sometimes uh, right after the architecture is, is uh, declared, immediately the implementation starts. Here we ask to implement backend, then we ask to implement frontend. We do it several times and then we start to build our application automatically. At some point, we encounter a certain problem and we call the agent, which is called investigator. And this agent tries to solve the problem of compilation of our uh, front end app. And later on, closer to the end of our project, what happens is that when everything is ready, we try to populate our database of tweets with certain examples. And for this, we do the agent, which is called DevOps. So here you can see, thanks to this sub agent paradigm, it's also really, really easy to read the logs and kind of debug the entire process. So now let me get back to the presentation and conclude. Today, guys, we talked about how you can implement an efficient, high-quality AI agent projects, how you can manage the memory, how you can co-divide them into several modules, and how you can be most efficient with every step on the way. I hope it was helpful for us and for you to know about it more. And uh, we invite you to connect with us with Lev, who is writing a lot about interesting AI projects he implements or finds online. And with me, who shares the AI, AI insights, he shares thoughts about AI's future and overall uh, interesting AI articles. And we invite you to look at the Clippy in our Twitter account. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Can you show your GitHub repo? Of course. Lev, will you show it? Okay, just a second. Uh, by the way, you can uh, click at uh, my Twitter and uh, see um, a bigger demo with the video. Uh, so here you have the instructions for the installation of the project and some details about how it works. Mm -hmm. And for that, we need to have uh, a GPT-4, right? So we need to have uh, uh, an API key for GPT-4. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, and so by the way, uh, what? Oh, nothing. Never mind. OK. By the way, we are adding the support for Cloud to make it faster because GPT-4 is not that fast. And therefore, the agent iterations 
take quite a long time. Uh, so with cloud, it should be faster. Is it just the two of you who work on this project or there are more people? There was also a team of Fidesev who worked on this project from the start. Mm -hmm. So it's three people right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if uh, are you open to contributions right now? Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. And if somebody wants to contribute, what? Uh, how do they go about that? Uh, so first of all, you could improve some of the sub agents. You could add new tools to the project. Uh, right now, a task which would be very interesting is to try to integrate the recently announced uh, open source language model for programming, which uh, actually uh, ranked higher than GPT-4 in some benchmark benchmarks. And it is actually a pretty popular request to add the support for local language models because people don't want to share something with uh, OpenAI. Mm -hmm. But I guess before jumping into implementing this, uh, if somebody wants to do that, they should first reach out to you and say, hey, I want to do this, right? How, how yeah. do I go about that? Do you already have some issues uh, in your GitHub uh, repo? Uh, there was an issue. One, okay. Yeah. So. One. Do you plan to take part in Hacktoberfest? Uh, we are not sure yet. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, you still have time, right? September mm -hmm. before October, right? So you, you have a month to decide if you want. Yeah. Okay. So I, I think, so my next question is, what are your plans? I think you kind of mentioned that. So you want to uh, add support for open source models, right? Open source LLM models. Is there anything else you want to, um, to do that is on your roadmap? In terms of usability, the number one thing we could do is to turn it into an IDE plugin. And uh, this would also be pretty intuitive since, since it could really act as a programmer. It could uh, open the files for you. It could uh, highlight all the changes. So that's what we want to work on. But uh, that is pretty uh, time consuming. So uh, this is not going to be too soon. I imagine like, you know, in movies when, you know, you have a screen and then all of a sudden everything is just starting happening by itself, right? So like it yeah. just opens a file and starts editing and then you see what yeah. it's doing. With a it, lot of locks, can, of course, scary locks all over the place. Yeah. yeah, it can actually open and operate the browser for testing or for the research of information. Wow. Like, are you guys working on the Terminator? Almost, judging by the name. <laughs> Hardware su support is uh, pretty far in the road, not for sure. Okay, okay. <laughs> Be careful, please. <laughs> okay. Um, do you have any advice uh, for anyone who is watching this? And since there are two of you, maybe each of you can share a piece of advice. Yeah, for me personally, it was really interesting to investigate the area of AI agents. And this is not necessarily an advice, but more like call to action. Make sure to read about it because it's very interesting. And uh, it, uh, it's really interesting. It allows you to view the AI project workflow differently. And overall, I think it's a good uh, way to spend your time. And one of the ways to do it, by the way, is by looking at some of the projects, for example, ours. It's wonderful. Uh, idea of AI agents and I suggest you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, my advice would be don't be afraid to build. Uh, and uh, in particular in AI, it's really interesting to interact with those things because when you build agents, it's like you uh, are working with living things and you have to teach them, you have to give them small pieces of advice, you need to tune them and that's really inspiring. Okay, thank you. That's an amazing project. Thanks for doing this in open source and thanks for sharing it with us today. And uh, yeah, I am pretty impressed. So I want to try it. So there is a project I want to do. Uh, I hope it supports Django. So I'll see. Uh, I'll give it a try. Thanks.